BC Football Club scholarship program is evolving year on year. Over the last few years, we've had a, a real success with, with players making their first team debuts, making their, their international debuts with the, in the Colleges League. We've also had players moving on to professional football clubs. It's not just the football side of the, of the programme that we see as, as successes. We also look at the education side of the programme where we can give players experiences with all sorts of areas of the football club. That's the beauty of, of being based at the football club in a, on a full-time programme. We have the interaction with the full-time first team members of staff, first team players, and also opportunities to watch and develop their understanding of the game by, by training opportunities with the first team. We're looking to create many more opportunities for, for people in the area. And this year will be the start of our first, very first girls scholarship programme. Uh, and this is something we're extremely excited to, to get up and running. We, we've recognised the, the success the ladies team have had here at Eastleigh Football Club, along with globally the, the um, improvement in, in the exposure of, of, of ladies football. And it's something that we want to be a part of and we want to give the opportunity to local girls to, to come and experience the same opportunities that the boys are getting. We've had a lot of success over the last few years and particularly last year with opportunities for players to feature with first team squads, and first team fixtures, friendlies and training sessions. Last year we had five or six first team debuts made by our scholars and, and that's a fantastic ratio from, for, for players that are looking to to make their way into the professional football game. And many players have started fixtures and league fixtures in the National League, in the FA Trophy, come on at grounds such as, as Notts County. And there's some real proud moments for, for the programme at the moment that we can look back on this season and we're looking for many of more of these to continue. I'm responsible for the, the first year scholars, so they're on a two year programme at the moment linked to education. Um, and obviously I do the coaching side from that. Uh, we train every day. Uh, which is good with match days on a Wednesday. We've got the first years and the second years, then we go into the third years, which and obviously the EDS boys, so uh, the elite development squad. Then they, obviously they can push on to become a, like a first year pro with the first team. So that's the big aim. There's a journey, there's a process on that. Um, but what, what they will get, the ones which actually don't go all the way down the chain, so to speak, they will get good coaching from us because uh, we have a good group of coaches here with various backgrounds and it blends well as a team of coaches that we have and we can all offer something that will help that particular individual on their journey. We try and do things the right way. We set the standards, uh, not just in terms of football, but obviously getting making them well-rounded individuals because they're still an impressive age, you know, knowing the rights and wrongs, you know, being polite, courteous, having the right attitude and application towards everything, not just the football side, but the education side and towards people as well. So uh, I think, you know, the whole setup that we have here is, is really, really good. And I, I can only highlight what I've been here for the last couple of months and it's, you know, it's really impressed me to be honest. So uh, there's a lot of good talent already on board. And obviously with the, with the new ones coming in, that would even make it even stronger. So when they reach the second year of their scholarship, we like to think they sort of got their feet under the table a little bit and then we can sort of ask a little bit more of them in terms of the tempo and the sessions and trying to sort of drive them and get them a little bit closer to when they're going to be towards the end of the year and we're trying to prepare them for the EDS really. So we want those players to be competing at a higher level, better standard, so that when Luke and Jason uh, the first team gaffer want them in, they're, they're nearly ready to go and join in with those guys. When they reach the second year, I'm in contact with uh, Hampshire Schools, which is a pathway for them to then go on and, and maybe play, represent England at England Schoolboys. And we've had a few this year. We had two, two lads that played for Hampshire, Joe Adams, who's moved on to Wigan now, and uh, Tom Grzewski, who's still a second year here, and he's playing for Hampshire and England Schoolboys. Um, so it's been really successful. He's managed to travel around the country and had a lot of perks playing with them and getting quite a lot of attention from other clubs. It's, it's just fantastic opportunity for these boys and when they reach that second year it's something that they can then aim for as well. We just think we've got a lovely balance here we've managed to get you know the the lads enjoy their lessons their classroom they're all together as friends as a squad and you know that you see that come out on the pitch when they play together and train together and at my age there wasn't things going on like this when I was coming through and I really wish there was because football every day training all the time is, is excellent and these lads you know, you can tell they love it and to be able to play football full time at this age is, is brilliant and some of them are really starting to show the benefits of that really and, and come through and we're producing good young players all the time. So in the third year, obviously the same age group as, as the EDS, however still doing the same course educational wise, still the same training schedule in terms of training Mondays and Tuesdays, Thursdays. Our game will be on a Friday instead of EDS on a Wednesday. So still the same, same pattern and schedule for them. Um, but a great opportunity for them to come in, train every day, 
um, both improve, develop, both on the pitch and off, of, off the field as well, um, in terms of their educational side of things. And just, just a fantastic opportunity for someone who especially hasn't been in a full-time environment before. We've had lads that started this third years this year, weren't part of the EDS, and now are playing Wessex League football, which some of the lads from the EDS are playing. So it's shown that the levels can be reached um, just because they're not in the EDS. Also, the pathways outside of a club, even outside of England, you know, whether it's the American scholarship, whether it's going to university and pursuing their education further, and then playing for maybe the university team or a local club in that area. The third years are going to set them up for success, both on and off the pitch, wherever that may be. So the Elite Development Squad programme allows the lads to come in. Um, they train full time at the football club. I'm working with myself and the other coaches. Sort of the relationship we have with the first team is crucial in that. Um, we train with them regularly. We train sort of side by side and work with them on a daily basis. Often the gaffer or Jace will say, we need a centre half today, a left back, a right back. And then I'll recommend lads to go up and train. Um, all of the boys this season have had opportunities in 11 11 fixtures against them uh, and, and general sessions as well. So the opportunity they get to play at a bit of a high tempo against against professional footballers um, is fantastic. Coming in training full time, having access to the gym, all the facilities we've got, eating with the first team, it's a professional environment and it, they, they go from being sort of scholars to feeling like they're a first team player. Um, and I feel that just really kicks them on in terms of their general standards and just open, opens their eyes to the next step. Um, and I feel that's why we're doing really well at the moment. I've gone from playing um, games obviously twice a week and a little bit of training and mostly my own work in the gym and things. And coming into the programme, it was so professional. Um, I was so happy I chose to do it and I'm training pretty much every day and just the drills, everything is so professional and put in place and the coaching, Luke Hardy obviously, amazing coach and has just helped us so much. The, the goals we set, everything's so clear and it's just, to keep on that ladder has just been so helpful and really like, reachable. We're absolutely delighted with it. It's, um, it's gone from strength to strength. Uh, I, I couldn't be more impressed with the work that Jason and Luke and the team have done with it. Uh, and we're extremely excited to be able to introduce the Ladies Scholarship next year. Um, and I just think that it's, it's got so many pluses, whether it be for uh, bringing through potential stars of the future, uh, whether it's, it's to bring more people to our club, to reach out into the community. And actually, what I'm also very impressed with is the, the work that the uh, VLUK do with the education side of things, that that still is a priority for the football club rather than the football. Yeah. We try and inject some of our standards into the scholarship, whether that be leaving the classroom in a good state or just how they conduct themselves away from the pitch. And I think that that's important to us as well. There was a situation whereby our second years were about to go into a game that was important for them to win the league title. And actually four of their players had to miss out because they weren't where they needed to be with their education. And that's a, quite a bitter pill to swallow in terms of affecting the other lads that were up to date with their work and effectively costing our opportunity to do well in the league. But the, the fact that it remains important that they're doing their education, keeping up to date with their work, I think that's a really good message to have. And I'm glad that as a club, that's how we go about our business. The thing about the scholarship is we uh, spoke to the coaches right at the very beginning who were all typical football guys they want to win their league they want to do really well and we want that as a club but we're actually we've had to sort of hold back the message that says actually it's far more important for them to get their lads out playing men's and senior football at like local clubs it's so much better for their development and we have found ourselves in a situation this year where probably a couple of our teams scholarship teams that should have won their league won't as a result as a result of us sending lads out to play in men's football and, and it, that, be, that benefit far outweighs the benefit of us winning a league. A league title is great but actually developing the lads and giving them the right, the right structure to come through the club is far more important.